tell y'all about credit for all of my folks. I love y'all to death. Listen to me. Let me let me switch to my face. Let me switch to my face. I love y'all to death. I swear, my people. Black, white, brown, yellow, orange, burgundy. I love y'all. But a lot of y'all got the credit game fucked up, and y'all really, really want to start y'all journey off scamming. All right? So let's just, let's just put it out there right now. No scamming. And what I mean by that is y'all be out here with y'all credit reports. Y'all look at y'all credit report. You see something that you 100% know that it was you. You got that T-Mobile bill you never paid. You got that Verizon bill you never paid. You got that Comcast, that Xfinity bill you never paid. And then you go on over here and you are trying to dispute it off your credit report, even though it is reporting accurately. That is what we call scamming, if you don't know. So we not scamming in 2024. We not popping off our year 2024 with scammer energy. We popping off our year with the right energy so we can become wealthy, abundant, millionaires, successful people, pioneers, innovators, creatives, and people that are a good role model, okay? So we're not going to start off our year scamming, all right? So we talking credit right now. A lot of y'all got the credit game fucked up, all right? So this is what I'm trying to tell y'all. When you dispute something off your credit report, if you know that you owned it, you are a scammer. I'm just letting you know. I just want you to know clear-headedly, but we're not going to pop off 2024 like that. The energy that you give to the world is what you get back. If you take from the world, the world takes from you. If you give to the world, the world gives to you. I want y'all to think about it like this. If you are a business owner and every single person you serve, everyone you do business with, they come and they eat your food, they use your products, they use your services, and then they do a chargeback, all right? Or I want you to imagine they use your, your services, they, get, they, they come to your business and they do business with you, and then they get it on credit, and then guess what? They never actually pay it. They let it go to their credit report, and then they say, you know what? I'm just going to get it charged off. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get it charged off, but I'm going to get it taken off my credit report. So they never actually pay for services rendered. We don't want that, right? And if somebody did that to you, you would be hurt. You would go bankrupt. Your business would never be successful. You will be a person who never enjoys freedom, abundance, or luxury because you keep getting scammed. So we don't want you to put that word that into the world. We don't want to have y'all having scammer energy in 2024. This is the year of the come up. This is the year that you become wealthy. This is the year that everybody gives to you because you're going to give to the world, all right? So no scammer vibes. Now that I got that disclaimer out, let's talk credit. Now, credit is very, very simple. Credit is very, very simple. Okay. Very, very simple. Credit. I want y'all to think about credit as if it's like your best friend. All right. Now it's exactly, this is a perfect analogy. So if you listen to me, you'll be able to level up and grow from this conversation. I promise you. All right. First things first, credit is like your best friend. If you go to your best friend and you ask them to borrow some money, right? You ask them to borrow money. They let you borrow the money, but when it's time for you to pay them back, it takes you a long time, okay? I want you all to think about this. You borrow the money from your best friend, and when it's time for you to pay their money back, it always takes you a long time. They say, you, you tell them you're going to have it back by Friday, and on Friday, you know where to be found. You say you're going to have it back on the next Friday after that, you know where to be found. So now you got late payments. When you go to go to borrow some more money from your best friend, do they want to let you borrow it again? Y'all just put a yes or no for these questions that I'm going to ask. When you try to borrow money from your friend again, do they want to let you borrow money again? Yes or no? Does your best friend want to let you borrow money ever again? No, they don't. Let me ask you another question. If you go to another, another friend outside of that best friend that you just borrowed money from, and you go try to borrow money from them, and they talk to your best friend, and they say, yo, I know you let Mitch hold money the other day. Did he ever pay you back? And they say no. And they say, I know you let Mitch borrow money the other day, a couple, like a last year, and, it, and he was taking long to pay you back, but um, is he a person that you would borrow, let borrow money again? They say no. So that's how your credit report looks. They're not going to let you borrow money because they're going to see that you borrow money from other people and you never paid them back. 
and you be late. Okay? So that's how credit works. It's just like your best friend. Same thing like this. If you go to one of your friends and you ask them to borrow money, but they see that you went to every other friend in a circle and asked them for the same amount of money, will they want to let you hold, will they, will they want to let you borrow money? If you went to every friend in a circle, every family member, and asked everybody for $50, and they, and they see that you keep asking everybody for it, would they want to let you borrow the money? Yes or no? That's like when y'all got a credit report that has too many hard inquiries. That's like when you got a credit report that has too many late payments. That's what it looks like when you got a credit report and you have balances that are still reflecting on your credit report. It's just like your best friend. So let, let's just think about it. So when you're saying that you got bad credit, what are you basically saying about yourself? That you're not a good friend. You're not reliable. If, I, if, I, if you was my friend and I let you borrow money and every time I ask you to, you know, to pay me back, you got an excuse. You make a late payment. And matter of fact, you try to act like it don't even exist. So this is the same thing for you, the scammers I told y'all about who just dispute in it. It's like you going to your best friend and you telling them, I never borrow money from you. Are you kidding me? I never borrow money from you. Do y'all see the analogy? Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Right? So now that's exactly how credit works. There's no rocket science behind it. So if you want to have a good rapport with your best friend, what do you do? Everybody tell me in the chat. If you want to have a good rapport with your best friend, what do you do? Somebody tell me. If you want to have a good rapport with your best friend, what are we doing? What are we going to do? Pay them back. Pay them. Pay them back what we owe them. Pay them back. Okay, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about it now, all right? So now that we understand how credit works, right? And I gave you all the analogy that is very, very spot on. This is what I want you to know. There are things that we can do with integrity and not necessarily have to pay them back the complete amount. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Somebody said build a relationship. Exactly. So this is what I'm talking about. When you want to repair your credit, let's just say that you have something negatively reflecting on your credit report. It's, it's, it's very old, right? It's a late payment. You got late payments on it and everything, right? So let's just say that you got, like, let's just say you owe T-Mobile 10, like, like six years ago, five years ago. And five, for five years, it's been reporting on your credit. You haven't been making no payments. That means you got late payments on it. You got uh, collections on it, and you got the fact that um, it has a balance. So all you have to do is this. Call the person that you owe. Say, hey, listen, I'm not quite in position to pay the whole thing, but if we can settle this debt for half, I'm willing to pay this today. And also, if you can give me a letter of deletion saying that you will delete this from my credit report. So now you're getting rid of the late payments. You're getting rid of the whole entire account. So there will be no history and you at least had the integrity to make amends with your best friend. You at least had the integrity, right? You at least had the integrity to call and say, I apologize, but I can give you some back. I don't have all of it. I can give you some back. If you can promise to never tell nobody else about me. Listen, listen to me. I got you. I'm teaching right now. Listen. I, if you never tell nobody else about what happened between us, I'll pay half off and we'll mend our relationship. And in the future, if I ever got to borrow money again, I know that I'm not going to pay it back late. I'm going to pay it back on time. And whatever I borrow money from you, you know it's going to be a good deal. Right? Now, what happens when you treat your best friend good now? What happens when you treat your best friend good? When you treat your best friend good and he lets you borrow some money and you pay him back on time, a lot of times you don't even got to pay them back no interest. Listen, a lot of times when your best friend got a good relationship with you, you so good and you so reliable and you got so much integrity. If you borrow money from your homie, not only you might not have to pay no interest, but he going to give you some more money the next time. So the first time you only borrow like 500, you borrowed the 500, you gave it back. Next time he like, look, take 5,000. You borrowed a 5,000, you gave it back. And then you say, yo, 
you know what, dog? I'll let you get 20000 Fuck it, man. You cool with 5K? You always taking care of me? I'm going to take care of you. You can hold $20,000. Go start your business up. And, yo, if you can get it back to me within the next three, the next year or the next 15 months, I ain't even going to charge you no interest, man. Just pay me back. Just pay me back exactly what, what I gave you. They giving you, when you treat your best friend right, they'll give you 15 months to pay them back with no interest. You literally can take the money and borrow it, right? You literally can take the money and borrow it, go start your business, go get customers, go get reviews, go get testimonials, be able to go scale your company up and then pay the man the money that he gave you 15 months ago with no interest back. And then guess what else when you give him his money back again? That nigga will give you a meal. The nigga will give you a million dollars. But you got to treat your best friend right. You got to have a good relationship with him. For the people who just jumped on a live who actually think I'm talking about a person, I'm not talking about an actual person. I'm giving an analogy for how banks work and credit works. If you can treat, that's all you got to do is understand where the banks are coming from, where the credit bureaus are coming from. How are they grading you? They're grading you based off of your ability to be a great friend. Reliable. If you borrow money from your homie, I'm going to tell you right now, if you borrow money from your friend and you don't pay that nigga back, he's not giving you no more money. If you borrow money from your family and you don't pay them back, they're not giving you no more money. If you go ask the whole entire family to hold money, they're going to say, yo, did, did this just call you and ask your money too? Oh, I'm not giving him nothing. That's too many heart increase. That's too many collections. That's high utilization. That's all credit is. It's just an analogy. Okay? So now... Some people are very confused about credit and they think it's all about the credit score. I know people, right? I know people with 600 credit scores and 500 credit scores who can borrow more money than people with 800 credit scores. So it's not necessarily about the score. It's about your credit mix. It's about what you've borrowed before. It's about what you're applying for. It's very, very specific to what you are trying to attempt to do. Okay? Now, in 2024, I want y'all to go into it with the right mentality. I want y'all to go into it with the right information. I want y'all to do it making the right moves. Instead of that left you always make, I want you to make the right moves. Okay? The reason why I'm on this vacation right here where I'm at right now, I swear I didn't spend a dime. I literally use rewards points. And I'm here. I've been here for days. I'm going to be here for a couple more. Because I understand how to leverage credit in a good way to where it affects me positively. You can use credit and it can affect you negatively or you can use credit and it can affect you positively. Make sure you are the one who is doing it in the right. Credit can put you in debt. Credit can put you in so much debt that you might not never be able to recover if you do this wrong, okay? So I want y'all, I want y'all to know this. Now, you can be a person who listens to a lot of these financial people and because you didn't get the right information, right? You didn't get the information that you needed before you got 100K in funding, 150K in funding. I know y'all follow these dudes on the Instagram who be telling y'all, I can get you 200K in funding for your business. I can get you 500K in funding for your business. Listen, y'all don't know what to do with 2,000 in your business. Y'all don't know how to do what to do with 1,000 in your business. Y'all don't know what to do with 10,000 in your business. So what the fuck are you going to do with 200 in your business? You're going to blow it. So stop, stop trying to go into those type of coaching programs and mentorship programs before you understand financial literacy. It's the most important part of it. The credit part is not the most important part. And I'm going to tell you why. Because y'all are going to put yourself in a worse position than you was in before you even started. What you look like going to get $200,000 in funding and you don't know what to do with 2K? You're going to blow the money. You are going to not only blow the money, you're going to start a business with the money. The business is going to get taken. You're going to be in more debt than you was before you started. You're going to have assets in that business that's going to have more debt than when you started. You're going to have the biggest lien on you ever. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want you to do that. You hear me? I don't want you to do that. I want y'all to financial literacy, put that primarily. Make yourself more viable. Make yourself more intelligent about money, about budgeting, about credit, about spreading, like doing a good credit mix. Educate yourself on that first. If you don't understand that, 
when you get a bunch of money, you're going to do the same thing you do with a little bit of money, which is spend it in an inappropriate manner. You don't get a return on investment. You don't actually systemize it. You don't do it the right way. Right? Somebody said you don't need to use credit if you don't have cash flow. I disagree with that as well. But again, you got to get in the right circumstances to understand what to do with the money. The worst thing I could ever teach a person who doesn't have any money is about how to get credit. (laughs) <laughs> how to get funding if you don't have no money at all that means you don't if you don't have no money at all that means you also it's something else that's going on so let's talk about the, the the true problem of it if you don't have no money at all that means that you do, you're probably not ambitious you probably don't work a job you're not a hard worker because you don't have to be an entrepreneur or a business owner to make money because you can just go get a job and just hustle you can go work multiple jobs you can pick up multiple trades, you can fix cars, you can do oil changes, you can change brakes, you can do deliver DoorDash, Instacart. You, so you're talking about money. When you're talking about money, it's not, it's not about you having good credit, all that. That means that you literally aren't even a hard worker. You see what I'm saying? You're not a hard worker. You're not probably that ambitious. So you gotta start there. So the first question you're asking, about somebody who doesn't have credit or anything like that. Are you ambitious? What is your goals? What do you want to do with your life? Why do you want to get this funding? If you want to get funding just to go buy a Fendi bag, you're done. If that's going to be your source of income. I actually know people who live off their credit cards. I actually know people who live off their credit cards. Like literally got a stack of credit cards this thick and they walking around as if they're rich, but they're just swiping their credit cards over and over and they're cycling their credit cards to cycling them through each other. You get what I'm saying? Somebody said not having money is just a symptom, not the disease. Exactly. So a lot of people that we're, we're seeing going to these seminars and these coaching programs and they seeing people talking about, I can get you up to 150K in funding. I can get you up to 200K in funding, 300K in funding. What the fuck are you going to do with that money? It's not yours. You're borrowing it from your best friend. Like I just explained it to you. It's not your money. You're borrowing it from your best friend. If you don't give your best friend his money back, there will be repercussions. They might not be fatal. You might not go to jail, but you do got to give the money back to your best friend. Because if you don't, you're going to be in more debt than you were before you even started. So now, not only are you broke, you broke and you got debt out the ass that you cannot come out of until you make amends with your best friend. They won't forget. It's some things that don't come off that credit report. It's some things you can't scam off the report. So you're going to have to make amends. And the more stuff you put on it, the more stuff that affects your credit report, the more stuff that you need to get off, the harder, the harder it will be to make amends with that best friend. Okay? So now, now that we understand what needs to be done in 2024, I want y'all to start devising a plan and getting in the right rooms, getting in the right places. I don't have to take a... a, I don't have to do a sales pitch for y'all to understand how good I am at what I do. I already know y'all know that. So this is what I want y'all to do. It doesn't have to be me, but y'all have to find someone coming back from where you're trying to go. And I want y'all to put yourself in a position to win. Learning financial literacy, getting obsessed with how money works, getting obsessed with hard work, ambition, and being able to get to the next level. The only way to get to the next level is go to a nigga from the next level and befriend him, learn from him. Copy, lie, steal, cheat off of them. Cheat off their tests. Some of y'all don't understand about lying, stealing, and cheating. You gotta lie to yourself to tell you that you're you're doing better than you actually are. That you actually can do something that you've never done. That takes you to lie to yourself. Steal, you wanna steal from people who's coming back from where you're trying to go. You wanna find that person who's in the classroom with you that you can sit next to that you know you don't gotta check their answers because you know they are right. You wanna steal off their tests. Cheat by going to the conferences and, and mimicking the way that they talk, the way that they walk, the way that they dress. Go to their websites, go to their Instagrams, look at how they got their bio, look at how they're moving. That is how you do it. You get what I'm saying? This is how you do it. There is no better way than to lie, steal, and cheat off somebody that is coming back from where you're trying to go. If you try to copy off somebody's test who also doesn't have money, what what will your bank account look like? If I try to, if I go in class and I copy off somebody test that got all F's too, what kind of grades am I going to have? That's what we look like when we in the hood, when we in our neighborhood, when we all in a middle class neighborhood trying to become wealthy and rich and we copying off the people test from right next door. 
If you don't live next door to Grant Cardone, if you don't live next door to Bill Gates, if you live, don't live next door to Jeff Bezos, if you don't live next door to them, when you're copying all people's tests around your environment, you're going to get the same grades as them. And if you want those grades, that's fine. If you want those grades, that's fine. But if you want to get A+, plus, magnum cum laude, dean's list, honor roll, if you want to get that, that different high-level bank account, you're going to have to, the only way to get to the next level is find a nigga at the next level and copy off them, follow them, mimic them, learn from them, close the IG between you and them, close the information gap. For anybody that's on this live that wants to learn from somebody like myself and other multimillionaires and ATL, I don't know if y'all know about ATL, but we work together. All of my homies are very, very wealthy. All of us, all of my homies have millions of dollars. All of my homies have high credit scores. All of my homies have real estate, have nice cars. They have, they take nice trips. They always go on vacation. If you want to learn from us and you want to come to ATL for three days and learn from us, comment the word change below. It's very simple. Comment the word change below. Get your ass in the room and don't play around. Other than that, I appreciate y'all sitting here listening to this credit live. Hopefully y'all wrote down the stuff I was talking about. Hopefully y'all get good relationships with y'all best friends so y'all credit scores in 2024 can match the ambitions that you say you want for yourself. So now that your bank account can match the ambitions that you say for yourself. Now your, your car and your driveway and your house actually matches the ambitions that you say for yourself. Everything that you are saying that you want to do, your life should look like that. Your life should look exactly how your ambition is. So if your ambition is staying in poverty, your life should look like that. If your ambition is becoming wealthy, your life should look like that. You should be moving like that, talking like that, walking like that. I don't have no excuse for anybody not to show up for they as the best version of their self. If you're not dressing right, start dressing better. You know what I'm saying? If you're not well-groomed, get better groomed. You know what I'm saying? If you're not hardworking, work harder. If you don't got money, go get a job. Go get a profession, go get a skill, go get a trade, because there has to be an even exchange. There's no free way to do this. You're going to have to buy certain softwares that cost money. You're going to have to have certain POS systems, certain websites, certain apps. They cost money. Nothing is free. So go get a job so you can fund your dream. Your job, your nine to five is your first investment partner. If you're not using it that way, you will work until you fucking die. You will work until you die and it's not going to be in the good way because billionaires and millionaires, they're not retiring. We all work until we die too. But the difference between us is we got a lake house. You feel me? We got a house right here on the corner that when we, we stressed out, we can go, go get on a boat and just go take a cruise. That's the difference. The difference is we can go on a vacation whenever we need to clear our heads. Whenever we need to make room for it, everything that's about to go next in the next week, in the next month, in the next year, if I got to go hard, I'll take a week vacation to get myself mentally ready. I can go to a spa, get a four hands massage three times a week. It's a different level of swag, commitment, obsession. OK, so I need all of y'all to get obsessed. It's 2024. It's a new year. It's time for us to really really take this shit serious, really become obsessed, really become successful. And that's when it's going to change for y'all. So I hope y'all enjoyed this live. Please take a screenshot, tag me, comment the word change, comment the word change, comment the word change. I look forward to meeting some of my new multimillionaire friends. If you don't know how to rich, stay rich. We continuously befriend people who are valuable. I'm going to say this again for some of y'all who don't know. If you don't know how to rich, stay rich. We continuously befriend people who are valuable, meaning other wealthy people in different lanes, with different avenues, with different customers. If you don't know that I have an email list of over 60,000 people, my friend, he has an email list of over 100,000 people. My friend here has an email list of over a million people. We share it with each other. The customers that don't know him, they will know him very soon. The customers that don't know me, they will know me very soon. Oh, you got a podcast? You got millions of listeners? They don't know me, but they will know me soon. Oh, you got a radio show? They don't know me, but they will know me soon. Oh, yeah, you got a brand? Oh, you own a network? They don't know me, but they will know me soon and vice versa. So if you don't understand, you need to get into this room and get into this room quickly. Become wealthy and valuable so you can stay wealthy and exchange value with others. Comment the word change. And we're going to get to this bag. Heavy. Heavy, heavy. And next time we come on to this, the Black Club trip, we're going to be all here together at the resort, chilling, masterminding, leveling up. 
becoming more valuable, more intelligent, taking techniques from each other. We share around here. But if you don't got nothing to share, it's time for you to get busy. So, again, I'll see every single one of y'all 25th, January 25th to the 27th, three days with me, will turn into a different level of swag. You'll be a different monster when you leave. So hopefully I'll see y'all. Talk soon.